Welcome to Organizational Behavior and Leadership, PA 910, University of Lynchburg. This is for Term 4, 2021. The faculty members teaching in this class are myself, Dr. Nancy Reed. I'm the course director and the course instructor for sections A, B, and C. Dr. Michael Estrada is the course instructor for section D, and Dr. Steve Kellum is the course instructor for section E. So please take the time when you log into your Moodle page to locate in the upper right hand corner who your faculty member is who's going to be teaching your section. So don't get confused. Occasionally I will send out um, emails to all sections of the course when there is a general course announcement such as um, the quiz is now open um, or make sure that you review the answers to the quiz. They are now available. But in general, um, you will communicate with your instructor for your section. The coursework for this class includes two quizzes, which account for 30% of your grade, and they are completed in week two and in week 10. There are nine discussion boards, which total 40% of your grade. And there's one written assignment due in week eight, and it's called the self-reflection paper. That written assignment is worth 30% of your grade. On the right-hand side, you will see a assignments list that tells when your assignments are due. This list is also available to you in Moodle. Um, about uh, a quarter of the way down the Moodle page, you will see the assignments list. And it's a printable Microsoft Word document that you can print out and keep um, so that you know when your assignments are due. So let's first talk about the quizzes. The quizzes are going to be over the required reading for that week and that week only. Students should take the quiz by Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. the student's time zone. Quizzes are open book and open note. When you do take the quiz, you're only able to take it one time. So make sure that you plan enough time to take the, the test in one setting. It usually takes about 30 minutes to one hour to complete. I do want to point out one thing um, that you will see in Moodle that has confused students in past classes. When you click on the quiz, you will see um, at the top where it says due date and it will tell you the due date of the quiz. And then you also will see what's called the close date. Do not get confused the, between the due date and the close date. I have to set the close date after the due date in order to accommodate for students in multiple time zones. Now let's talk about discussion boards. Students are encouraged to post their original um, post by Wednesday night, 11.59 p.m., the student's time zone. Students should post one response post by Sunday night at 11.59, the student's time zone. Original posts are due, um, are, have a maximum of 500 words with at least one professional reference. You do have to have one response post, and this maximum word count is 300 words with no professional reference. We do utilize AMA style in this class, and you need to continue to practice what you learned in PA 960, um, and you will be graded on your application of AMA style. Let's stop right here for just one second and talk about the discussion boards and some, um, some common questions we get throughout the term. People oftentimes will suggest that we move the Wednesday due date for the original post back um, later in the week. This is a programmatic standard and we cannot change the Wednesday um, due date for the original post. What I always recommend students doing if you're having a difficult time getting that original post done by Wednesday, you can week, work a week ahead. So look ahead on your assignments and um, be ready to post on Wednesday at 11.59, but you can do it the week ahead. Let's also talk about um, the one required professional reference on the original post. Although only one is required, oftentimes you will utilize other journals and researches, uh, other journals and research references like books um, to bolster points that you're making in your original post. Although the original post only requires one professional reference, most of the time, students will use two, three, or sometimes even four um, references. Just keep in mind that one professional reference is the minimum requirement. You still have to um, reference anything that you um, talk about 
that is outside the um, the reference that you used or the textbook. The last graded item is the self-reflection writing assignment and it is due by November 28th, 1159 p.m. students time zone. We do require you to use three peer-reviewed references in addition to your textbook. So that's a total of a minimum of four references. References should not be um, greater than five years old and the paper itself should be about four to seven pages in length and this excludes the cover page, reference pages, and any appendices that you might use. The, a template and an example is provided. So if you look on the right hand side, the picture there, in week eight, you will see the assignments and submission tab. And if you scroll down to item number six, you will see that a template and example is highlighted in yellow. <clears throat> Generally, if you follow these two items, you will do well on this assignment. One of the things that we grade in regards to this assignment is usage, usage of leveled headings. AMA style does not specify exactly how to do AMA or exactly how to do level headings. So we're going to talk about it today and set you up for success. The self-reflection paper um, should have these leveled headings and you will see these in the template and the examples provided. Keep in mind that headings are meant to divide primary parts into secondary parts and so on. So there should be a minimum of two level one headings. And if you use a level one heading and you decide to use level two headings, you have to have at least two level two headings under any level one heading. If you decide to use level three headings, you have to use at least two level three headings under any particular level two heading. Headings reflect the progression of logic or flow of thought in an article and thereby guide the reader. Headings also help break up copy, making the article more attractive and easier to read. This is an important skill that you will need to utilize and um, implement whenever you uh, complete your scholarly project for, PA, for the PA 960 series. So here's an example of the leveled headings in this assignment. Again, if you use the template, you will be set up for success. Level one heading should be justified to the left. All letters in the words should be capitalized and they should all be bold. Level two headings are also justified to the left. They are in bold but only the first letter of every major word should be capitalized. And then level three headings, you will indent one time and you will capitalize only the first word of the level three headings. It's in bold and you will put a period at the end of the level three heading and then start the paragraph. The class textbook is a test textbook called Organizational Behavior in Healthcare, and it's by Borkowski and, and Mies. It is the fourth edition, and you do need to get the fourth edition for this class because the quizzes um, have chapters that are not um, present in the third edition. You will have to use those chapters that are not currently present in the third edition to complete um, the, the quiz. That is the ISBN number and you can get this textbook. It's available at um, online retailers such as Amazon. The next textbook that you will need to use in just about every course in this program, and that's the AMA Style Guide. We are using the 11th edition of the AMA Style Guide, and the nice thing about this is it's digitally available through the University of Lynchburg's library, so you don't have to purchase anything. But this is where you will look up any kind of questions or rules that you are not familiar with in regards to AMA style. If you have a vacation or an anticipated absence during this class, please make sure you notify your instructor regarding the vacation dates or the anticipated absence via email. Try to work to or try to get the work submitted ahead of time. Discuss with your faculty member a submission date if the work is not able to be completed ahead of time. All coursework is re released at the beginning of the class. So for example, if you know you're going to miss week 11, you're able to go down to week 11 and look at what the assignment is. 
you're not able to submit the assignment until one week before the, um, the actual uh, class due date. So let's say something is due on November 28th. You can currently see the assignment right now, but you would not be able to submit it until November 21st. That's when we would open it up for you to be able to submit your work. Unanticipated late assignments. So if you have an unanticipated late assignment, let's say um, you had anticipated on doing your original post on Wednesday afternoon, but they called you into work and you had to work unexpectedly, um, that's an example of an ex unex unanticipated late assignment. So make sure you email your faculty member as soon as you know that you might be late with su submitting an assignment. And then in that email, you should also uh, include an anticipated due date. I find that students are much more successful on keeping up with their work if they set an, uh, a new due date immediately uh, and it prevents you from continuing to push the work off. And any questions that you have should be directed to your course instructor. Again, here's a picture of what Moodle looks like and in the upper right hand corner it will show you who your instructor is so that's who you would direct your um, questions to i hope that you have a great semester and you learn a lot in this class thanks